The resistance and alliance forces prepare in earnest as a new threat looms on the horizon. Oh, I too, glad you could make it. As you may have heard, Commander Alden has given orders to embark from Alliance Headquarters to hold back the advance of the Empire's latest menace. Oh, that's what it's about. Okay. Not that the soldiers stationed there are too chuffed about being on the front line against these new weapons. If they're designed to slay primals, they'd make short work of us mere mortals as well. Mind you, it's guys Belsar and his followers who have led the charge so far. By all accounts, they've been giving as good as they can get. Unfortunately, their sorties have met with little success. I dare say they benefit greatly from your presence on the battlefield. I dare say so too. Yeah. If you're ready, my colleague over at Porta Pretoria will show you the way. Cool. So, your mind is set, then I shall apprise you of the situation. We have discovered that the previously abandoned Ultima Weapon Project is being helmed by the reformed Vith Legion 7th. They have already succeeded in producing several prototypes, one of which is said to be deployed on the Eorzean front. Its name, the Ruby Weapon. Severa and I were able to get within striking distance during one of its test runs, and made an attempt to destroy it. An attempt that ended in failure, alas. Based on our knowledge of the Ultima Weapon, the explosives we employed should have been sufficient to blast through its armor plating, but they barely left a mark. We suspect the gifts of its predecessor may have proven its source of its resilience. As you well know, the Ultima Weapon has, was designed to absorb ether from the Icons, and the Ruby Weapon no doubt shares that ability. If any were summoned during the uprisings in Garlemald's occupied territories, and thereafter consumed, our enemy would become all the more formidable. But its near impenetrable armor was only the beginning of our troubles. It fought back with whip-like claws that can be extended and contracted at will. Ooh, cool. In the face of such opposition, we were forced to withdraw. Some claws. Some claws, really. That's what did it. Gaius was injured, shielding me from the ruby weapon's assault. Even now, he struggles to stand. Damn it all. If I hadn't been so careless, this wouldn't have happened. You need not concern yourself. Let us not forget that I am the one who initiated the Ultima Weapon Project. <laughs> True. If I must give my life to bury this shameful legacy, then so be it. If you were to face it as you are now, you'd be cut down before you even hobbled within firing distance. In any case, we can't afford to lose the information in your head on both the foe we face and the Empire itself. We all know that asking for two's assistance presents our best chance of stopping that war machina. It is true that if anyone were capable of putting down such a monstrosity, it would be him. You guys. You guys. Though I have no right to ask this of you, will you lend us your strength? Let me think about it. Hmm. I'm not one to back down from a fight. You have my thanks. And mine. Though I must impress upon you the urgency of our situation. We have received word that the Empire is preparing to advance on the Gimlet Dark. That is where we will intercept them. If our fears are proven correct, the Ruby Weapon will be among their host. Should it break through our lines, there is no telling the devasta <laughs> devastation it will wreak. Is this going to be a thing throughout this? Make no mistake, the very survival of Eorzea hangs in the balance. Once you have steeled yourself for the battle ahead, your escort will lead the way. Does my escort have a name? He's just standing over there. What price must the world pay for my hubris? Shit, he really regrets the whole Ultima Weapon thing, huh? It was a bad point in his life. A short while earlier in the Garlean occupied city of Wurlitz Magitech installation. Oh, this is it? There's the claws. Oh God. Commencing Ruby Weapon Activation Sequence. All units stand by. Oh, he looks like Alien. With like the neck. And the teeth. Initiating Synthetic Aurocyte System. Fusion successful. No signs of incompatibility. Awaiting your signal. Who is this? Ruby Weapon. Codename Darnus. Ready for launch. Darnus. They're doing the emote. 
As in, uh, like Nail? Is that what it's named after? Valdolin has briefed me on our mission. I am to take you as far as our expected point of contact with the ruby weapon. Once we arrive, the rest is up to you, I'm afraid. Cinder Drift, okay. Straight in. Here it comes. <laughs> They really decked it out, huh? It's got rocket wings. Mark three anti-icon war machine out of the ruby weapon. Oh shit. Enemy detected, commencing attack. Cool version of the song. Sheesh. Okay, I'm gonna die, so you guys gotta keep me alive for this, okay? I get a dedicated healer. Preparing Hamadada, subject Darnus. Stomp. I like how the text box changed. A little bit there. Bang! He's just stomping. Okay. I guess just Oh. Oh, you gotta step on the I see. Okay. Okay. I thought it was like maybe a movement thing. I'm guessing a frontal. Okay, that's a raid wide. Plexi claw again. Oh my god. I, oh my god. He's at 47%. Not bad. What does this mean? Get out of this? Let's follow you guys. Okay, wow. That makes sense. It's interesting seeing the different markers they use. Like, a lot of the time, they, they keep using different markers for the similar things. Okay. Oh! Plexi Claw again. What's this one gonna be? Get on the things? No, don't get on the things. Oh boy. Enrage? That's gotta be. Initiating ultimate sequence, ignore all the warnings. Ah, he's dead! Or is this a. This can't be, the ruby weapon is unstoppable. I'm sorry, everyone, this is the end for me. Activating. Oversoul. Increasing pilot override rate to 100%, commencing force shutdown and system restart. Okay. Synthetic orosite switching to oversoul mode. 
Darn this comp. What the fuck? Nail. Ugh. Do we have to kill her? Oh my god, look at the arena. I am Nail Van Darnus. Come to purify this forsaken land. <laughs> we killed her? Yeah, the song as well. We're back in coils, baby. Weaving map. Real quick. Meteor Project. Alum. Oh, ads. This is epic. God, I miss this music. Oh my god. They hit hard. Anybody seeing this shit? Uh, it's gonna hit, boys. We're still alive? Red Moon of Destruction, I shall prove to thee my worth. Magitech Meteor. I love how she's just standing on him. Or like, in him. Oh, Meteor. Big ass meteor. There's so many coils references. I'm summoning Phoenix while Nell Von Darnus is here. That one would do there. Alamud is back. We kill these comets. Go. Oh. Five seconds. I have a feeling one of these is not gonna work out well for us. So we should we should kill her pretty soon. I think. That's just me. Let's go! Is that it? No. She had a life worth living again. God damn, what are they cooking in Garlemald, man? Hey, bro. Even from afar, your figure was unmistakable, as ever, an impressive display. Though, as I am sure you will concur, the ultimate weapon pales in comparison to this new monstrosity. If their research is allowed to continue, the next model will be nigh on unstoppable. With that in mind, the Alliance has enlisted the help of... Wait, I hear something. Hello? Hello? Here to sift through what remains of the ruby weapon, are you? Ah, 
Ollie, what do you think you're doing? Ollie? Who's Ollie? Father? <laughs> what the fuck? It has been too long, Alphonse. And you too, Rex. Wait, are they all brothers and sisters? Given that the Empire is proceeding with the weapon project and making inroads into Eorzea, I suppose it was only a matter of time until our paths crossed. It's wonderful to see you again, Father. Although I can't say I think much of the company you've been keeping. I know lots happened, but I'm just glad you're all right. And now you can come back to Garlemald with us. So they thought he was dead? My days serving the Empire are over. Because you're suspected of assassinating Emperor Varus? Oh, we know you'd never do a thing like that. There must be a way to prove your innocence. Then everything can go back to the way it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, not time. So he found you two shivering on the roadside when he was going through Whirlit. Lucky for you, eh? If he hadn't, we'd probably be dead by now. They're all like mini versions. As for us three, our parents all died in the epidemic. We'd still be begging on the street corners if it weren't for him. I just wish there was a way we could repay Lord Gaius for all the kindness he's shown us. He fights for the Empire, so we should too. That'll make him proud of us. You're saying we should join the army? I don't think that's such a good idea. Everyone in Whirlit was scared of the Garleans. Why would we want to be like them? Lord Gaius is different. I know he is. You're right. He always says that the strong should lead the weak. Maybe that's why he took us in. Aw, oh, you guys are not weak. All right. If becoming a soldier is what it takes, I'll do it. Who's with me? Count me in. And maybe one day people will look up to us like we do Lord Gaius. And it's settled. From now on, we're all brothers and sisters fighting for the same cause. Brothers and sisters? And that would make Lord Gaius our father? Well, if he doesn't mind us calling him that, I suppose so. And that makes you our big brother, since you're the oldest. You'd better be nice to us, or I'm telling father, ha ha. Ha 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 Okay. So he took them in. Father, since you went away, a lot has changed in the Empire. For us, too. If we'd known that you were still out there, still alive, none of this would have happened. What do you mean? The truth is... No? If you must go, I will not stop you, but answer me this. Who was piloting the ruby weapon? We all know that Nail Van Darnus has not returned from the dead. Who do you think? Uh, I don't know, that's why I asked. <laughs> it was Melisandia. Wait, the kid? No. No, I refuse to believe that. Oh, oh. I refuse to believe you would let that happen. She was a sister to you. To all of you. We only want to finish what you started. And while we will never forget all you've done for us, the next time we meet shall be as enemies. 
Goodbye, father. God damn. As for you, hero of Eorzea, you'll pay for what you did to Melisandia. I swear it. Did that kill her? I didn't mean it. Oh god, I killed his adopted daughter. You get chat, you guys made me do it. Some interesting Gaia's backstory at least. That's cool. So, do they resent him for starting the Ultima project? Or are they like more on board with it for the Garlean's sake? And they just like wanna finish it? Hmm. <gasps> Mr. Garlon, look who shows up. Well, well, guys, Van Belsar. We meet again. Come to see how your precious weapon project has been proceeding in your absence, have you? You are come to collect data on the ruby weapon, correct? The pilot, Melisande, should still be inside the cockpit. I will ask Valdolan to escort you to the wreckage. Oh, he can't go. He can't face it. Any idea who this Melisande is? An imperial crony of his, perhaps? One of the orphans. Guys always did have an eye for talent, and a mind to nurture it. In fact, Livia Sass Junius was another protege of his. He even took me under his wing when my father became obsessed with the Meteor Project. It's strange that I felt closer to Gaius than my own flesh and blood. I remember that. Yeah. We get the flashback thing with this music. Then, my father and countless others lost their lives in the Bosia incident. Although he was acting under Emperor Solus's orders, he masterminded the whole thing. I begged him to reconsider, to put an end to this madness, but my words fell on deaf ears. That's when I returned to Gaius for support, but he was as much of a pawn to the Empire as my father, and refused to intervene. And when my turn came to serve, I defected, and fled to Eorzea. I blamed Gaius as much as any of them, perhaps even more for the barbaric acts carried out in the name of conquest, but when we met at the Praetorium, all the hatred that had been festering inside me seemed to fade away, and I remembered the man I once respected. To think the dreaded Black Wolf was a mere plaything of the Ashens, who left him broken and disgraced, having sent thousands of his men to early graves is more than most could bear, and now the lives of the children he raised hang in the balance. Any personal grievances I have with Gaius can wait. I'd best gather what information I can on the ruby weapon, but I'll be back as soon as possible. Sid just show up, says hi, and then leaves again. <laughs> oh you, Mr. Garland. If Sid is as I remember him, it will not take long for him to finish investigating the remains of the ruby weapon. He never was one to waste time. He's back. My engineers are still in the field, but there's something I thought to show you right away. It's about the pilot. I'm not sure how to tell you this, but... If Malisandia is dead, I only hope she was not made to suffer. Death would have been a kindness. In all my years, I've never seen such a perversion of science and nature. Okay. Her body was fused with the ruby weapon's core. Those last moments must have been spent in pure agony, as her very life's essence was drained from her. So, she was sacrificed to power that infernal machine. How did they do that? We must act quickly if we are to prevent the Empire from committing further atrocities. Two, is there any other information you can share with us regarding the ruby weapon prior to its deactivation? Galamud, maybe? Stuff about that? Nail Van Darnus. The delegates mean not much to Melisandia. From what I gather, it sounds as if data based on Nail's combat capabilities was used to override the pilot's consciousness after she was fused with the core. If this technology is perfected and the Empire begins implanting the memories of renowned warriors such as the White Raven into its soldiers, the Alliance won't stand a chance. 
Is such a thing even possible? Transference used... Oh, yeah, the guy in the back of it. The crazy dude. Oh, so that was the pro... Oh, I see. I see it's all I was connected. Your friend did mention he overheard the Signifery loading various sets of data into the test model during the battle. It would appear that the system has been improved since then. While it may bear some similarities, we won't know for certain until we've analyzed the wreckage of the ruby weapon. It cannot be denied that combining combat data from an experienced soldier with the powers of an icon has yielded remarkable results. But in doing so, the Empire has sunk to the very depths of depravity. This is beyond forgiveness. Is it worse than Black Rose? Is it worse than chemical weapons? I, I don't know. I, I think that one's a bit of a toss-up. For once, I agree with you. Yet one question remains unanswered. How were they able to obtain data on someone who was supposedly killed prior to the Calamity? That's what I'm trying to determine. There is one possibility I'd like to explore, but I'll need to carry out a more thorough investigation first. Severo will provide support while you are in the field. Not only is she extremely well versed in the latest Ingarlian technology, there are a few soldiers I would rather have watching my back. In the meantime, Valdolin and I will follow the ruby weapon's tracks back to its point of origin. We will learn what we can of the weapon project and the manner in which Alphonse and the others are involved. Should we uncover anything of value, we will relay it to the troops stationed here. For now, I suggest you use this lull in Garlean activity to recuperate. Heh, <laughs> don't have to tell me twice. Would I be correct in guessing that this belated reunion with those darling orphans of yours has stirred up memories of your time in Garlemald? He's questioning his loyalty. Remember our agreement, Gaius. If you so much as think of returning to your Imperial Masters, I will kill you. Okay, Vauderville. So you put down the ruby weapon. Because I wish I could have seen it. Not from too close, mind. I suppose I should report news of your victory to the higher-ups. I realize you must have been through quite the ordeal, but could you give me a quick summary of the battle? You make it sound so easy. From the way you tell it, anyone would think you slay hulking brutes like that for a living. I kind of do, you know? <laughs> I'll put all of this into a report and leave a copy over there, should you fancy a bit of light reading. Anyway, I expect you've got more pressing matters to take care of, like going for a celebratory pint. As the Garleans pluck up the courage to come knocking again, we'll let you know. Until then, rest up. I get 4k gil from that. Is that it? You can pay me a little better? God damn, the resistance is broke. It's on broke bitches. Meanwhile, in the Whirlit Magitech installation. They're gonna come up with another one, aren't they? What is with the hair? The Goku hair. We should have told him the truth. He'd be able to help us. I know he would. That's exactly the problem, Ali. If he knew the true nature of the weapon project, he'd find some way to interfere. We've come too far to back down now. I won't let Melisandia's death be in vain. Even if that means going against father's wishes. She's gonna... She's gonna go off on her own. I already know what's gonna happen. She's gonna go off on her own, and she's gonna, like, tell us and help us break in or something. Cheer up, Alphonse. We can all go back to being one big happy family after we've dealt with those pesky Eorzeans. It'll be just like old times. If only it were that simple. There's no guarantee any of us will make it back alive. Excuse me? I think you're forgetting whose turn it is next. Oh, ye of little faith. With me at the helm of the Sapphire Weapon, it'll be over before you know it. Rip, Rex. Whatever happens, Rex, promise you'll come back to us. I couldn't bear to lose you, too. They all know it. Oh, that's sad. We're just gonna kill them all? I bet- okay, then I bet she's gonna be last. Maybe. Something like that. 
Hey, glad you could make it too. I'm sure you're as anxious as anyone to hear what we've uncovered. Our early hypotheses were proven correct. The Garlands have designed a system whereby a pilot's consciousness can be forcibly supplanted with data based on the memories and experience of another. So even a rank amateur could obtain the combat capabilities of a seasoned warrior? Precisely. And we learned how this was made possible when we opened the cockpit. The monitors were still operational, and among the messages displayed, one particular phrase caught my attention. Synthetic Aurocyte System. Which is what exactly? Well, the core of Ultima Weapon was referred to as the Heart of Sabik by the Ashens. We believe it to have been a type of Aurocyte. I can't say much for the synthetic sort at this stage, but I've encountered real Aurocyte before. It was extremely potent, perhaps equal in power to the Heart of Sabik. It's unclear whether the Garlean Simulacrum possesses the same properties as genuine Aurocyte, but I intend to follow this avenue of inquiry to see where it leads. What we do know is that it was used to implant the combat data of Nail Van Dornis into the pilot, who has been presumed dead since before the Calamity. Are you any closer to discovering how they were able to retrieve this data? The link didn't occur to Gaius at first, but he later told me of devices fitted to the Magitech armor of the Empire's high-ranking officers. There is reason to believe they were designed to emulate the soul crystals used throughout Eorzea. Oh. Yes, that was rumored to be its true purpose, but it was never publicly acknowledged. Perhaps those in the upper echelon of command wanted to avoid comparisons to the so-called savages they were meant to be conquering. There is also the question of whether this system functions as intended. From what we've seen, we can assume they were successful in gathering combat data of those wearing armor equipped with the device. If the comparison with soul crystals is valid, perhaps this data was transferred via ether. However, it seems that they extracted not only memories relating to combat, but the soldier's very essence. As you saw, the pilot succumbed entirely to the will of Van Darnes. Though this is merely supposition, it's possible that being fused with the Ruby Weapon's core accelerated the process and caused the deceased Legatus to manifest in corporeal form. Could it be that the death of the pilot was caused by the system malfunctioning? It's hard to say. The ruby weapon itself was still largely intact when it deactivated, which strongly implies that it was the synthetic aurocyte running amok that killed her, rather than the damage incurred during the battle. Hmm. But even after our analysis, I'm afraid we still don't have enough information. For now, perhaps we should consult with Gaius as to our next plan of action. Valdolan has come bearing vital information. I traced the ruby weapon's path back to the occupied territory of Whirlet, which appears to be where it was built. My geography is... Er, yeah. While Alamiga was placed on the western edge of Gimlet, Whirlet lies on the opposite side, to the east. It was once a proud and prosperous city until it was brought to its knees by the Imperial invaders. You seem rather well informed. Perhaps I should have taken you with me. Hmm, I thought that much was common knowledge. It is also where Alphonse and the others were born. And now the weapon project has brought them home. Yes, the place is now rife with Imperials. They have established an airship supply depot in the coastal town of Turncliffe. According to the locals, something resembling one of the weapons was transported there a few days ago. This bodes ill indeed. Were it possible, I would attempt to capture Alphonse and his followers before they can launch an offensive. However, the distance between here and Turncliffe presents a considerable obstacle, and in all likelihood their weapon will be ready long before we arrive. Approaching by sea would allow us to save time by circumventing their ground-based troops, provided we were able to secure a vessel. I got two submarines, if anybody wants. Just need to call Sally. Or you could use the Enterprise, and take the most direct route of all, as the crow flies. In fact, this is the perfect chance to put my top secret plan into action. And might I ask what that entails? Hmm. <laughs> it wouldn't be much of a secret if I told you now, would it? What I can say is there's a starring role plan for you, too. Me? Why so surprised? You didn't think I'd let you get off that easily, did you? It'll be here soon, so don't go anywhere. 
off he goes. I see Sid still delights in keeping others in suspense. I can only hope he does not make us wait over long. Hey, right, we're sure in. Let's go. I'm ready to fight. The secret plan is Sid ties me up to the front of the thing as one of those like, you know, one of those like bio things. The fuck is this? What the fuck is this, Sid? It, do we have our own ultimate weapon? Ayo! Ha! <laughs> Sick! Please tell me I get to pilot this. Oh, it's even got the logo. Here it is, too. I present Garlon Ironworks. Adaptation of the Ultima Warrior. The G Warrior. Oh, G for Garlon. I know all I can design when I see it. Excavated from one of their ruins, no doubt. As a slot, to be precise, we came across it during the course of our investigations and decided it would be a shame to let it go to waste. True. True. Could come in useful, you know? And you will be taking this refitted relic to face the enemy head on, yes? Perhaps my knowledge of the ultimate weapon will be of use. No, 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 no. I get to drive it. Me. I didn't get to drive the sky slipper. I'm counting on it as it happens. But first, we'll need to perform a test run in the simulator before throwing you into battle. Come, we haven't much time. Let Gaius do the test, and then he can tell me, and I will... I'll jump in it, and we'll do the real thing. Yo! Safety lock, Pirate Boozer. Let's begin the G-Warrior training simulation. I've prepared three trials to teach you the basics. First, I want you to try attacking the guidance system. Don't worry, it won't fight back. Okay, the G Warrior is under the range of weaponry. Now is your chance to learn what it's capable of. Yeah. All right. Bam. Boom. Okay. Holy shit, he's doing 70k damage. It's an AOE, right? Oh, it gives him a bone. Easy peasy. I love how it's flying. Let's move on to something a bit more advanced, shall we? G Warrior also comes equipped with Pyretic Booster, which diverts even more power to its weapon and increases the speed of maneuverability. Okay. However, it comes at a price. Activating it places a huge strain on the G Warrior, so it must only be used in short bursts. That's why it's best to practice here before heading into battle. Now try activating the Pyretic Booster. You'll notice that your movement speed is much improved, but as shown in your monitor, the G Warrior becomes more and more structurally unstable as time passes. To deactivate the Pyretic Booster, press the same button again. Okay. Auto restoration can mitigate a certain amount of damage incurred, but don't rely on it to carry you through the battle. Bam. 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 So is this chunking my health? Is that what's happening here? Okay. Oh, it jumps too. Yeah. Hey yo. We've covered offense. Now to look at defense, this is where the Ethereal Aegis should come in handy. Boom! Oh, cool. The monitor shows how much power is being drained. Don't let it get too low. Where are we? <laughs> are we just out in the middle of the ocean? <laughs> For the last trial, we use the Ethereal Aegis while attempting to destroy the target. Okay, so we just do everything? Okay. Boom. Boom. This is spam too. You're a natural. All right, that's everything. Time to end the simulation. Ah. Okay. That was, that was cool. I better get a month of this. That's all I'm saying. When this is all over. Are you sufficiently prepared? I guess. I'm guessing this part's gonna be a lot harder. Then we shall depart for Turncliff at once. Ooh, look at this place.
Kind of nice. It reminds me of the city from Pokemon. It seems they were expecting us. But who is the pilot? Ah, it's a Rex. Two, we're almost there. You better have your wits about you. Oh, okay. I'm just sitting here in like my little Apple, <laughs> Apple VR Pro shit. Do the thing, G Warrior. Yeah. <laughs> now, get ready to strike. Is it too early to back out? That's the two I know. Always with a joke at the ready. Wait, you're not joking, are you? <laughs> no. Sid! Why you do this? <laughs> Oh, it's like his hair. Yo, Star Wars. The Sapphire Weapon, Mark IV Anti-Icon War Machina. He ugly. He ugly. I'm big. Can't afford to lose. It's all or nothing. Yeah. Activating oversoul. Oh, he's t he's gonna become like the little squidgy guy. Hydra's combat sample ready. Initiating something. I can't hold on. Well, Rip Rex. I will be monitoring the situation from the air. Follow my instructions and eliminate the target. I love how the little screens, they just blink. <laughs> they don't like move their faces or anything. They're just blinking. I guess we just pop that and go. Well, 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 it seems the savages have been busy. I shall enjoy breaking their new toy. Oops. Can I just do this? Correct. Boom. 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 Oh boy. Boom. Oh, there's more. Those little mini Gaiuses, they look like Gaius. Okay, that's a read wide. Oh! No. That was a fat finger. It's submerged, but not for long. Watch for signs of movement. Ah! Let me pop that for some movement speed. Wait. Plasma shot. I'm... Okay. I should you stop using my R. Oh, shit. Okay, we got our uh, AOE. Oh fuck. Fucking hard class, dude. Wait, is this it? Oh shit, they're all self-destructing. I need mana. There we go. Kill this guy. Boom. Okay, that chunks him for 2% each time. 1 to 2%. Oh no. What the fuck just happened? Oh, there's the other side on the other side? Ha, oh, fuck! Okay, we go to the back guy and we use the three, right? Oh, come on, come on, come on. Ah, wow, we got animation caught. Fuck you. Okay. That's the legit way of doing it. You're not gonna hit me in here, right?
I need more mana, dude. Okay, and then we'll just get the the last ones. I'll do this. Um. We'll do that. Get some mana back. Put that up. Do that. Is this a side attack? Yeah, the mana management stuff. Give me some more. Boom. He'll do his thing. Oh, fuck. I'm good in here, right? You can tell I wouldn't be a good melee. Oh, fuck you. Oh shit. I have no mana. Give me mana. Turn that on. This could be bad. Is there one more? There's one more! You little fucker! Give me all my mana. Put that up. He's so dead. 7%. This has got to be in rage, right? <laughs> no mana, dude. <laughs> He's dead. We'll, we'll just GCD him. There we go. Yeah, that was fun. And hard. Look at that look of determinism. The target has been silenced. That damn squid. Now that the immediate threat has been dealt with, we should gather what information we can and turn cliff. I'll fly over. I'll meet you guys there. I could just fight in this from now on, right? Yo! What the fuck? New town? It's so pretty. Is this it? Don't tell me it's just a little area. Oh shit, there it is. This is Endwalker, right? Surely this opens up for Endwalker. Yeah, this song has like a dark twist to it. It's nice, but... Lonely Widow? Those garly bastards are finally gone and it's all thanks to you. My husband died defending our town when they first invaded. And for all the years since, it felt like he died for nothing. Now his soul might at last find peace. Well, me lady, you're very welcome. Dude, did they just hire Greek people to do everything from 5.0 onwards? I like the lights. It's very modern, you know? You did well to pilot the G-Warrior so adeptly in such a short time. And with the weapon largely intact, Sid and his researchers should be able to gather a wealth of valuable information. Before it is dismantled, perhaps we should take one last look upon our fallen foe. Okay, we're gonna have a little sentimental chat by the the cliff. That was Rex, by the way, Gaius. In case nobody told you. We should have known Father and his friends would track us down sooner or later. Now they're at our doorstep. The sapphire weapon still isn't ready. Even so, it should still be able to fend them off, or at least buy us some time. Not quite how I imagined it, but this seems as good a way to die as any. He knew. Rex, I... Goku! <laughs> Rickon, why are you still here? 
You're supposed to be moving the other weapons to a safe location. You can take care of that while I pilot the Sapphire weapon. Oh! <gasps> what are you talking about? I'm the pilot, not you. There's no need to put your life on the line. Besides, it's still incomplete. I can barely perform basic maneuvers, so it'll be practically useless in a real fight. We have a solution, Oversoul. You want to end up like Melisandia? No, of course not. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. So? But she didn't give her life in vain. The ruby weapon left behind data that's been used to improve the system to prevent any further malfunctions. What difference does that make? Once Oversoul is activated and the pilot fuses with the core, there's no way back. That's why I should be the one to pilot the Sapphire weapon, not you, Rex. Alphonse needs you. You and I both know I'm the least qualified pilot we have. There's less to lose if I don't make it back. <laughs> oh no. No, I won't let you. Please, Rex, hear me out. Ever since we were children, I was the smallest, the weakest, too afraid to stand up for myself. But I had the best brothers and sisters a boy could wish for. You were always there for me, protected me. Now it's my turn to protect you. Take the other weapons and get out of here. See this through to the end. Do it for me. From Melisandia. I'm counting on you, Rex. Rick on. What I don't get is why they feel like they have to do this. Hmm, you always did have a stubborn streak. Alright, Recon. I won't let you down. Just promise you'll wait for me on the other side. We'll meet again, brother. You all made me happier than I had any right to be. And now I finally find my purpose. I have no regrets. Really? Come on, Sapphire. We may be far from perfect, but we have a job to do. Let's give Father something to remember us by. Oh, I, right, that's what it is. The conversation they had as kids was because they're... They want to, like, be something. Because they were all weak, right? The Echo, I presume. What did it reveal to you? Rickon, my poor boy. You were braver than most could ever hope to be. Sad for him. There's nothing he could do. It is as we feared. I'm sorry, Gaius. Damn. He's still questioning him, right? First Melisandia, now Rickon. We must find the remaining weapons and end this madness. It's cool how they built his character up for this long as well. And now we get like this backstory about how he's technically to blame for all of this. For starting the project. There's a lot of complexity to him. Tell me, what do you make of Gaius Belsar? I understood the two of you have been acquainted since his days as the Black Wolf. He claims to have shed his pelt when he took up the hunt for Ashians. But he's still the same man deep down. He certainly kept quiet about having a flock of foster children back in the Empire though. It seems he would rather bear his teeth to his former masters than allow harm to come to them. Yet try as I might, I cannot make sense of it. Does he truly fight for the good of mankind, as he would have us all believe? Or is he merely biding his time before he reveals his true colors? Whatever the answer may be, in the end he will always be a Garlane. 
and though there may be honourable men and women among them, I have suffered much and more as a result of their conquests. Barbaric campaigns in which Gaius Belzar played no small part. Zayim, my first encounter with the Garlands was twenty years ago, shortly after the fall of Alamigo. They continued their march into the lands that had long been home to we Duskwhites. We sought to repel the invaders, but we were woefully unprepared. Our bows and arrows were no match for their magitech, and even our most powerful magics did little to slow their advance. I fought on the front line, but was knocked unconscious in the opening exchange. When I came to, I was alone, the rest of my unit slaughtered. I hurried back to my village to look for my wife and daughter, only to find the place deserted. Aww. My search lasted for days, then weeks, then months, and it seemed they had disappeared without a trace. I finally learned from two Imperials held a bitter mill. The villagers had been captured and used as test subjects for the poison gas that would be later known as Black Rose. Ah, uh, they were never seen again. For twenty long years I roamed aimlessly, with nothing but hatred to keep me alive. I eventually found myself at the order of the Twin Adder, who offered me a place among their ranks. The desire for revenge was the only thing I had left. So without a moment's hesitation, I accepted. Were it not for the war with Garlemald, I would have been loath to work alongside the city-dwelling Gridanians who for so long had treated my kind as outcasts. But none of that mattered anymore. It all culminated with Operation Archon. As you led the charge into the Praetorium, we were right behind you, and when the place came crumbling down, most of us were caught in the rubble. I escaped with my life, though many others were less fortunate. Having dragged myself free from the rubble, I sought a way out. It was then that I encountered none other than Gaius Bels- Oh, he saw him! Oh. None other than Gaius Belsar on the verge of death. The gods had delivered to me the man whose conquests had robbed me of everything. I was poised, ready to exact my revenge. And then he spoke. I will not beg for mercy. Should I do it in the old guy's voice? I will not beg for mercy. I only ask that you stay your hand a while longer. I cannot die until I have rid the world of the Ashen Menace. For millennia mankind has danced to their tune, but no more. Then once we are finally free. My life is yours for the taking. Oh. I would have struck him down there and then had I not sensed truth in his words, so I decided to grant him a stay of execution and join him on his hunt. A stay of execution, so he's really gonna fucking kill him after all this? All this time, I've kept a close eye on Gaius. Though he is ever on the watch for pursuers, he has granted me ample opportunity to slay him if I so choose. And I still might if he shows even the slightest sign of betraying our agreement. I don't believe him. I think when the time comes, he wouldn't do it. But for now, the Ashians are my chosen quarry. If they are indeed the ones pulling the Empire's strings, then it shall not end until they have been eradicated, every last one. Though I could not save my kin, there are those who may yet be spared the horrors of war, for those we can yet save. Unfortunately, dealing with the Ashens will have to wait until we have brought an end to Garlemald's weapons project. Though we may have vanquished two of the new weapons, we must take every effort to prepare for whatever the Garleans throw at us next. Perhaps Severa can tell us whether the Ironworks engineers uncovered any information of note. Wow. All of these characters have such depth to them. The Ironworks engineers are still at work dismantling the Sapphire weapon and investigating the Turncliffe Magitech facility. Though they have yet to make their report, they may have some news to share at this juncture. Please wait here a moment. We've yet to finish our investigation, but I can give you a preliminary report. Were you able to recover anything of note? Before abandoning the facility, they'd attempted to destroy anything they couldn't take with them including many of their research materials. Luckily, some information relating to the Sapphire Weapons combat data was intact. Judging by what we saw during the battle, it was extracted from Regula Van Hydris, correct? Yeah, that's who we saw. I was trying to remember his name. It also appears that the Sapphire Weapon was actually an incomplete state, and therefore unable to perform at full capacity. Even so, it was immensely powerful. Had they been given the chance to finish it before we'd arrived, who knows how it would have ended. 
Indeed. We may not be so fortunate next time, so we must prepare for the worst. The Ironworks will continue to investigate the Sapphire Weapon and look into possible countermeasures. The Echo afforded you a glimpse into the conversation between Rickon and Rex prior to the weapon's deployment. Do you remember any other details? Yes. <laughs> Improvements were made to the synthetic Aurasite system to prevent malfunctions, and it was never their intent to create a manifestation of Nail Van Darnus. But there's one thing that was intended. Oversoul. Its activation results in the pilot being absorbed by the core, killing them in the process. Rex and Rickon were fully aware of this, were they not? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the death of the pilot was by design all along. Alphonse, how could you? Sacrificing your own siblings to fuel these accursed war machines. Is Alphonse the guy who's behind all of this? There's no way, right? Surely there is no cause worth paying such a price. Aye, nothing is more precious than family. This nightmare is far from over. It appears that Rex has fled with the remaining weapons, and we can assume that Alphonse has every intention of sending them into battle. We must find a way to disable them before Oversoul can be activated. I have seen enough of death. I do not wish to see any more. Then there is no time to waste. Let's be about it, Gaius. Sever, you're in charge here. Keep Sid and his team safe while they carry out the investigation. Understood. Please see that no harm comes to Gaius. While we're gone, I need you to relay everything to the Resistance troops. Your first sign of con should prove useful. If there are any developments, we'll be sure to contact you. Okay. I feel like Ali is going to play a stronger part in this. I feel like she's the one not going to die, maybe? Welcome back! It sounds like you've been on quite a journey. All the way to Turncliff. And judging by the fact you made it here in one piece, I trust everything went according to plan? What an astonishing account. I wouldn't mind putting that G-Warrior through its pieces myself. Certainly a lot more stimulating than supervising this rabble, I'd imagine. Hey, I'll need to make money, dude, you know? I'll gotta pay the bills. Anyway, as before, I'll compile the information into a report and leave it over there for your perusal, should you feel so inclined. If we hear anything from headquarters, we'll be sure to pass it on. Oh, a tabletop. The chest of this Garland Armwork skill replica of a select portion of the Sapphire weapon glows ominously, except no substitutes. I see what they did there. God damn, they're brutal. Ha! <laughs> R.I.P. Rickon. Meanwhile, in the Vith Legion's Whirlit Headquarters. Seventh. Oh, Black Rose music. Who is this? Is that Alphonse? Alphonse. Hey. It's just making the kids watch. I've come to deliver my report, Lord Valens. <laughs> okay, we get it. He's sweating. <laughs> ah, so you've returned, young Alfred. Or was it all a wick? Not that it really matters, of course. I hear that you and your darling brothers and sisters have allowed the Sapphire Weapon to fall into the hands of the enemy. Do tell me it isn't so. I'm afraid that is the case, Lord Valens. Oh, come now. No need to be so solemn. As they say, to err is human. To forgive, divine. And you know how forgiving I can be. When it suits me. What's he drinking? Milk? What cup of milk? He needs his gains. 
So, tell me, whatever your name is, who was able to best the Sapphire weapon? Our sources state that the one known as the Warrior of Light was assisted by Sid Garland and Gaius von Belsor, my lord. <laughs> the fingers. Gaius, Gaius, Gaius. Yes, it seems he's been quite the troublemaker of late. Defecting from Garlemald, assassinating the Emperor. Whatever next. Oh well, there's no use crying over spilt milk. Ha! The pun. Speaking of which, I've become quite the connoisseur since arriving in Whirlit. This particular variety comes from a rare breed of cow, you know? Only a hundred of them in existence and pampered every day of their lives. I love the intensity of the milk. The milk. The special milk. Yes, they are quite valuable. Until their milk dries up, that is. When it does, they are sent to the slaughterhouse like all the rest. For that is their lot in life. Stop it with the fingers, dude. To be discarded once they have served their purpose. Did I create the ruby and sapphire weapons so that you could deliver them gift wrapped to the enemy? I can see it now. Sid Nan Garland rubbing his hands with glee at all the technological marvels we've bestowed upon him. And you let guys from Belsar of all people get the better of you. Wait, did that hit him? How do you think this reflects on me, the legatus of the Vith Legion, humiliated by that traitor? Humiliated, I say. There's only one way to deal with worthless provincial filth like you. Wait for me in the correction chamber. You'll need to be taught a lesson in obedience. The correction chamber? Yes, my lord. Forget my intrusion, Lord Valens, but it's time for your meeting with the head of Magitech Development. Oh, how time flies when you're whipping the useless soldiers into shape. Yes, yes, I'll be along once I've made myself presentable. Can't have people thinking I've let my standards slip now, can I? Shit, man. Oh yeah, the kids are just watching. He knows this song too. Oh shit! But he's pissed. Who is this guy? Or is this his suit? Ali? It's not the same guy, right? What are you doing here? You wish to see me, Lord Valens? Did I not? <laughs> Get me some milk. Ah, yes. That's right. So she's next? So you're Ali, yes. And you join the military of your own free will, along with your fellow orphans. Such devotion! What an inspiration you are! You see, it is my firm belief that love grants us the power to move mountains to overcome any obstacle. He's gonna use her to get back at Gaius. Together we shall discover the strength that lies within you. Take my hand, child, I will show you the way. Don't believe his lies, Ali. Why would you trust a guy like that over your dad? Your adopted dad. Yeah, he's a creep. There's cool camera work there, though. Like, cool angles. Ah, it's good to see you two. I'm pleased to report that Master Garland and the others uncovered a fair bit of useful information at the Imperial facility in Turncliffe. In fact, he'd like you to rendezvous with Gaius in the town square where he'll reveal what they've found. 
Once you're ready to depart, your escort will lead the way. Now that you are here, perhaps Sid will finally deign to dispense his findings. Severa, inform him of Tuu's arrival. Thanks for coming. <laughs> You're welcome. So what have you discovered? To tell the truth, we were lucky to obtain any information at all, considering the lengths to which the Imperials went with covering their tracks. You see, the hangar below was not just used to store the weapons, but played a critical role in their creation. We now know the code names given to the three of the weapons, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Gotta catch them all. Obviously, we are all familiar with the first two, but the third is something of an unknown quantity. At the very least, this confirms the existence of another of those abominations. Let's go after it! The problem lies in ascertaining its whereabouts. None of the locals have seen anything resembling a weapon being transported, either by land or by air. Which of course leaves only one option, the sea. According to what fragmented data we were able to recover, the Emerald Weapon is equipped with aquatic capabilities, much like the Sapphire. Meaning that its escape from Turnglyph would have gone undetected, and could potentially be anywhere by now. But if Alphonse plans to have it absorb more primals, the logical choice would be Eorzea. And travelling by sea would allow him to circumvent the front line at Gimland entirely. The Alliance must be alerted at once. Hold your chocobos, Severa. It seems that the Emerald Weapon was still incomplete when the Vith Seventh Legion withdrew from Turncliffe. It's far more likely that it was transported to another facility in order to add the finishing touches. If your suspicion is correct, that would narrow our search to but two possible locations. Castrum Marinum in the Rotano Sea and Castrum Ossidens in Eastern Lanosha. Both of which are known to harbor remnants of the... Fourth, the fourteenth, fourteenth legion. Your former subordinates, guys. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. Be that as it may, our objective is unchanged. Valdolin, you and Severa will make your way to the Castrum Austins, while Tu and I head for Castrum Marinum. Should we locate the Emerald Weapon, we will give the signal to dispatch the G Warrior and eliminate it before it can be activated. Sorry to disappoint you, but we're still repairing the damage it sustained during the encounter with the Sapphire weapon. While Alugan machinery has its uses, it's a bugger to find replacing parts in a pinch. We've actually been working to expand its already impressive arsenal, but the G-Warrior itself is in no fit state for combat. While I'm aware this is far from adequate replacement, I can provide an ironwork submersible to help Tu and Gaius reach Castrum Marinum. I'll have one sent ahead to Vesper Bay. Thanks, Shed. Uh, we already have two subs, though, but we'll take a third. A submersible, eh? I don't much like the sound of that. Perhaps Severa and I should count ourselves fortunate that our destination could be approached by land. I pray you have a safe journey. Watch yourself out there, too. It is time we departed. Let us make our way to Vesper Bay. Okie dokie. As per Master Garlon's instructions, the submersible is ready when you are. But before you depart, I received some scraps of intelligence regarding your opponent from my colleagues in Turncliffe. Apparently it uses some sort of levitating hand-like appendages. Six of them, in fact, though we're not quite sure what purpose they serve. It sounds like having eyes in the back of your head might come in handy, but that is all we know, I'm afraid. You have our thanks. After all, forewarned is forearmed. If the Emerald Weapon has indeed been transported to this castrum, it would need to enter via the dry dock. We shall do likewise. As one might suspect, there are measures in place to keep out intruders, but the security systems can be tricked into recognizing us as an Imperial vessel. That said, infiltrating the facility is merely the first step. Should the Emerald Weapon be activated, it is only a matter of time before the pilot uses Oversoul. We must silence the war machina before this happens, and failing that, grant the poor soul at its helm the mercy of a swift death. Had these wounds healed more quickly, I could have gone with you, but I fear I would only slow you down. As such, I shall provide what support I can from afar. Whatever happens, the Emerald Weapon must be defeated at all costs. Astromarinum. Okay.
That's a lot cooler of a submersible. This is it, the Emerald Weapon. I've been expecting you, hero of Eorzea. Look, father, this is the power that we command. Okay, bro. I wonder what this one's gonna be. Oh no! Oh you fucker. Dude, I'm trying to fucking cast! Come on! It rotates! Okay, well that was a quick death. I didn't expect such a crazy mechanic from the outset. Like, well, at least let me get my fucking ruby off. What are these things? Uh, okay. Knockback? Yes. Too obvious. Okay, here we go. Okay, alright. They're kind of sick. I get it. That's a cool mechanic. I just wish I knew about it at the start. There you go, little hands. The things again. Why are people going in here? I guess that's why. Used didn't whirl it all those years ago. Okay, so we don't get hit by the balls. Ow. Who touched the balls? And then a knockback. Very nice. Ow. Oh, is it seven percent? Is this guy gonna have another phase? Oh yeah, he absolutely is. He's pausing at point one. So it's come to this, no matter what. I can't afford to lose. Oh, the Oversoul. Here we go. Not even you can beat the Empire's finest. Activating Oversoul. Here we go. Here we go. Ali. Alphonse. This is goodbye. Rex. What have you done?
What is the meaning of this? Great. That glow. <laughs> Bear witness to the glory of the Empire. He simulated him, this is Warlet, at the time of the invasion. Did the synthetic RSI be causing this? Oh my god, his armor looks sick. The emerald weapon is now gold. Oh yeah, I hear the song. What? Oh, we create those attacks. That's cool. Holy shit. Okay. What do we do with these? Oh. These are very interesting mechanics. I got lucky with that one shot. <laughs> Legio Phantasmatis. That's some bullshit. Ah! It's actually really hard. Yeah, this is a banger as well. Purchase Terminus S. Wait, we're at 5%? <gasps> oh, fuck, not this. We're dead. He's dead. RIP Rex. I mean, he, he chose to, to die. That was cool, though. I like the spinny mechanic where you're like out and in. That was a lot of fun. They take like a lot of the the old stuff you see and they revamp it to have like harder, more modernized mechanics. I think it's a really like positive thing that they do that. And so it ends. But why would Rex throw away his life for this? You are right. If I am ever to learn the truth, I must concentrate on the task at hand. Of course, we do not need to wait for Sid's analysis to tell us whose combat data was used on this occasion. It galls me to think that my techniques and strategies could be so closely replicated. Nevertheless, the observations I made during the battle may yet prove useful. As a matter of fact, that was not the only information I was able to gather. I intercepted a signal that revealed the troops stationed here were permitted to withdraw, seemingly in return for assisting the Seventh Legion. They must have known that the Alliance would follow the Emerald Weapon here sooner or later and make good their escape, meaning the way is now clear for Sid to inspect the War Machine's remains. Let Sid do his work. We got here as soon as we could. Not that we could have done anything to prevent this tragedy. 
From what we know, it seems that the Emerald Weapon was Ilm for Ilm a great deal more powerful than the previous two. If this is allowed to continue, who knows what sort of monstrosity the Seventh Legion will conceive next. Nevertheless, Tu has once again proven himself capable of overcoming the worst the Empire has at its disposal. You may be relieved to hear that Castrum Ossidens was free of anything resembling a weapon. Unfortunately, it was also devoid of any useful leads, and we came away empty-handed. In all honesty, part of me wishes we had never found the Emerald Weapon. Perhaps then, Rex would not have been forced to make the ultimate sacrifice. I only hope that he is finally at peace. We will do what we can to spare the others from sharing his fate. I and the Ironworks will search this place from top to bottom for clues as to the Seventh Legion's plans. Before that, allow me to sweep the area for booby traps and the like. I would not put it past the Imperials to have left a few surprises for us. Agreed. I'll go with you. With that in mind, I'll begin my examination of the Emerald Weapon. Carefully, that is. How do you even examine this? Nap time. Alphonse, you knew all this time, didn't you? Melisandia and Rickon too. Everyone except me. And you, Rex? Yes. That's what the synthetic Arsize system is. The fusion between pilot and core is the key to Oversoul. And unless we use it, we don't stand a chance of beating Father's newfound friends. They stand between us and the Primals, without which the weapons will never reach their full potential. We thought that if you knew the truth about Oversoul, you'd try to stop us. Of course I would, but what I don't understand is why all of you are so willing to give your lives to the weapon project. Thank you, Ali. I knew it. She had some sense. Man, right? Like, come on. It all began the day Father left. Without his guidance, his protection, the Garleans lost any respect they once had for us. Respect, is that it? But their cruelty peels in comparison to Valens. To him, conscripts like us are expendable commodities, an endless supply of test subjects for his twisted experiments. But no matter what they do to us, we will never lose hope. If it is the duty of the strong to lead the weak, we will become strong and protect those who cannot protect themselves. That's what Gaia said, right? The Weapon Project will give us the strength we need. We will create a world where people like us can live without fear of prosecution. We want you to see this new world for yourself, Ali, even if we must give our lives to make it a reality. But why me? The years spent serving the Empire have changed us all, except you, Ali. Even after everything you've seen, you're still the caring, innocent girl we grew up with. More than any of us, you deserve a chance at happiness. That's what we all agreed. Ali, listen to me. Right now, the soldiers assigned to watch over us have been called away to the capital. Now is our chance to get you out of here. Oh! <gasps> then why don't you come with me? If Alphonse and I were to run away now, they'd only force others to take our place. We can't let that happen. This is our way of upholding the ideals Father instilled in us. Our lives are a small price to pay for a world its freedom. Wow. So they're save? Wow, so they're sacrificing themselves because they know it's inevitable in order to buy time to defeat it? Is that their thinking? That's a twist. No, how can you expect me to leave you behind? I won't do it. Damn, his hand is big. It's the size of her head. We will be forever at your side, Ali. Rex, 
Take her to the holding cells. <gasps> no, let me go. Rally. And she doesn't really get a say either. So, win or lose, the plan is to hand over the classroom to father. Is that right? Yes. They'll take Ali into their custody before the Garleans return, while you will be free to pilot the Emerald Weapon without her interfering. We can't let her hinder the completion of the weapon project. I'm counting on you, Alphonse. Don't let our sacrifices be in vain. Rex, have you forgotten what I told you? You mustn't use Oversoul. I can't lose you too. Oops. <laughs> we both know I can't win without it. Besides, we need the combat data of the Emerald Weapon fighting at its peak if we're to have any chance of perfecting the synthetic Aurasite system. You know I'm not the sort to do things by halves. Forgive me, Rex. Don't you worry about me. If this is where I meet my end, I'll do it with a smile on my face. The rest is up to you, Alphonse. Rip Rex. I still don't... Are they... Like, they still want to complete the project, though. But it seemed like they were sacrificing themselves for the greater good there. Oh, Ali. We got her. This is the girl you spoke of, yes? She was locked in a cell, but I saw no harm in letting her out. I can't say for certain, but it seems she's been through quite an ordeal. Oh, God. We couldn't have moved before bringing her out? Why, Rex? Why? Gaius, once we've extracted the core, we'll take it back to Turncliffe for analysis. Perhaps she should come with us. There's no use in her staying here. What's he thinking? Is he still feeling guilty? I guess he would be. What's like their goal of getting of the project? Like what's the actual outcome they're trying to get to? Cause surely they know if they like create these weapons, it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna, things are gonna get messed up. So that's even worse. Maybe they're just not thinking logically and they're going for that honor. Sever is taking care of Ali, but it may be some time until her nerves have settled. If the vision you witnessed is indeed true, Alphonse and Rex locked her away for her own safety. When she's ready, I would know more of what her brother hopes to achieve, and why he must resort to such desperate measures. Ali's condition has improved somewhat, but she remains in a state of shock. We must give her more time to recover. There was one other thing I thought you should know. When we checked her for injuries, we saw that her back is covered in welts and bruises. Oh dear. Oh, it must have been the guy. I can't remember his name. Va Va Van Var Van Voris? Who did this to her? It seems she was subjected to beatings on a regular basis, judging by the varied stages of bruising. I dare say this was the work of her Garlean masters. Poor girl. You speak as though you have seen this before. Seen? I have lived through it myself. Oh. I was born in Whirlet. Twenty-three summers passed. My mother was a local woman, but my father was a pure-blooded Garlean and a member of the occupying forces. Though I know very little about him, his rank afforded me imperial citizenship. His acknowledgement of our familial ties was the extent of responsibility he took for bringing me into this world. Still, it is more than can be said for most of his ilk. My mother and I were shunned by the people of Whirlet, who treated us as badly as the Garleans did, if not worse. I thought that if I were to become an Imperial soldier, my position might somehow deter those who would cast scorn on my mother, if only out of fear. And so I joined the army. 
The acceptance I earned was but temporary, however, and my superiors were quick to blame and any perceived shortcomings on my savage lineage. Rather than waste time on official court marshals, they administer their own form of corporeal punishment. God damn. I was eventually assigned to the 12th. <laughs> to the 12th legion and fought under Zenos Ye Galvis in Alamigo. In the chaos that followed our defeat, I seized the opportunity to flee Whirlit. Which he was there? Well, it was never much of a home. It was all I had. But nothing could prepare me for what awaited. My mother had for many years suffered from poor health and relied on medicine to keep her alive. In my absence, the Garleans had denied her treatment. Shit. That's brutal claiming that it would be wasted on savages. By the time I could return to her side, there was naught I could do. There was nothing left for me in Whirlit. I would be punished for desertion if the Imperials discovered the reason for my return, and I was never accepted by my so-called countrymen to begin with. I ran as far as my legs could carry me. It was then that I met Gaius. So that is the truth of it. Other than a few scant details, I knew naught of your past. It sickens me to think that I once fought under the same banner as such vile creatures. I had always believed it to be the duty of the strong to lead the weak. Yet there are those who become drunk on the power afforded by their station, and prey on the ones who they should protect. Like a canker, this corruption has spread to every part of the Empire. Even those with Garlean blood such as myself are subjected to their cruelty. They hold particular contempt for the Aura. An easy target for abuse being so few in number. Perhaps, like me, Ali thought she would be spared such treatment once she joined the army. Alas. I only hope that with time, Ali can put the past behind her and make a new life for herself. But for now, all we can do is wait for her delirium to subside. It is Valdolin's turn to keep watch. Let us ask him if there has been any change. Yeah, so they're doing the same thing as, uh, as what she did. They're all following, like, the same errors. Like, trying to get the respect, trying to keep their name, and it all goes wrong. I guess you can't join a, uh, authoritarian dictatorship army and, uh, have good things happen. I suppose you're here to ask about Ali. Is she well enough to speak with us? As her condition has improved somewhat, I would say so, provided you do not cause her any undue distress. Wait here. Ali, I am sorry. What happened to Rex? It was my fault. Melisandia and Rickon, too. They died because of me and my foolish ambitions. Father, no. This cannot go on. Please, Ali. You must tell me all you know. Of course. Yes! Easy. First, I need to know what became of you and your siblings after we were parted. So much has happened. It seems like a lifetime ago. After your disappearance, we were all assigned to the newly reformed 7th Legion. At first, each Legatus was quickly replaced by the next until eventually, a man named Valens van Varro was given command. He was sent from the capital. But before that, he was a specialist in experimental Magitech weaponry. We later discovered that he was ordered by Emperor Virus to complete a project involving anti-primal war machina, the weapons. But after the Emperor's death, he was free to employ whatever methods he saw fit, and his greed for power only grew. Some even say he is planning to use the power of the weapons to lay claim to the throne. But I think there's another reason for his obsession with the weapon project. Not that he'd ever tell anyone, but he's always muttering to himself, and I've been able to put the pieces together. He's jealous of you, father. Ho oh, ho! I guess he got overly angry and aggressive about Gaius. Valens van Var. I must admit I was only recently that I first heard that name. 
Valens used his knowledge of Magitech to devise various military strategies. He was given a position in the army and quickly rose through the ranks. That was until one man stood in his way. You, father. He was one of the candidates to lead the new 14th Legion, but that role fell to you. After that, he was assigned to serve under a far more gifted engineer, Nero, <laughs> who was in charge of restoring the Ultima weapon. Balance has resented you ever since, going so far as to oppose the ideals you upheld. Where you treated those who served the Empire based on merit rather than on their race or origin, Valens is adamant that pure-blooded Garleans are superior to all others. It never ceases to amaze me how far some will go in the name of revenge. All that hatred festering away. Nothing good could ever come of it. Hmm. So the marks on your body are his handiwork? Ho 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 ho! Look at that face! Yes. To Valens and his men. We are no more than fodder for his experiments. Playthings on which they can vent their frustrations. Every day is filled with nothing but pain. If I had remained in Garlemald, he would never have been forced to endure this abuse. It's not your fault, father. We could have fled from Valens if we wanted to. After all, we were expendable and easily replaced. The truth is, that's exactly why we couldn't run. In saving ourselves, we would be condemning others. But if we were to stay, to see the weapon project to its completion, we would gain the power to defeat Valens, and then the Empire itself, freeing the world from its tyranny. Ah, okay. So it was that. That way, we might start afresh and find a place we can call home. And not just for us, but for anyone who wishes to live in peace. You would give your lives for a future you may not live to see? We took courage from your teachings, Father. The strong must lead the weak, and we would gain that strength by whatever means necessary. We will fight for the sake of those who cannot. But we knew that you'd never consent to our participation in the weapon project, which is why we couldn't turn to you for help. As the pilots, we're the only ones who are able to stop Valens. We know just how powerful the weapons are. He would use them to bring the world to its knees. And his masterpiece is the worst of them all. What is the masterpiece? If only I could get my hands on it, then I could save Alphonse and all of Whirlit. Father, I know you and Alphonse stand on opposing sides of this conflict, but there must be some way you can help him. He may have called you our enemy before, but he never meant it. He still loves you, Father. You are everything he aspires to be. Aww. I have failed him. Failed you all. But I refuse to abandon him to his fate. I will free him from violence, if it is the last thing I do. No foreshadowing, right? Don't do that to me. We can't lose Gaius. Thank you. He needs you. Now more than ever. Listen, Ali. I once sought the strength to rebuild the world as I saw fit. But the ultimate weapon was born not to create, but to destroy. Alphonse must not follow in my footsteps. I know all too well where they lead. I will do all I can to help your brother. Pray, tell me where he is. He's... He's... I'm sorry, I don't know where he could be. In that case, I shall have the Alliance dispatch scouts. Wherever he is, we will find him. As for you, Ali, you must stay here and rest. Wait, you're the one who fought Rex, Rickon, and Melisandre, aren't you? We're the ones who threatened your homeland. You only did what you had to do. I have no right to ask this of you, but... Lend my father your strength. Save Alphonse. 
I know not why they call you hero. Hmm. Alphonse, I'll do what I must to free you, even if it means going against father's wishes. But I have a good feeling about his new friend. Severa, see that she has everything she needs. Our allies must be informed of these troubling events. May I ask you to relay this news to the troops in Girabanya? Oh, Gaius. Your loving father act may fool the others, Gaius, but not me. For every life you've saved, you've ended a thousand more. Or is this your idea of redemption? Call it what you will, for all my transgressions. I believe I still have a part to play. Shit. He still doesn't trust him. Was I wrong to spare you that day? Or will you honor your word? It seems the time has come for the Black Wolf to show his true colors. Oh, the foreshadowing! No! 